What's up guys? Justin here with the SketchUp Essentials for iPad. So in today's video, we're continuing our beginner series for SketchUp for iPad by modeling a house. Let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, and so for this example, we're gonna keep this fairly simple. So we're not gonna give our walls any thickness. We can talk about how to work with walls with thickness in a future video. For now, what I wanna do is I wanna jump in here and I'm gonna activate the push-pull tool right here. And I just wanna move my pencil over this edge, then press down in order to start the push-pull process. And again, we want to type in a value. So in this case, I'm going to type in a value of 10 feet and hit the enter right here. And so what that does is that gives us a box that we can then use as a base to model our house. So the next thing I want to do, and there's a couple different ways that you could do this. What I want to do is I want to start by drawing the central point of my roof right here so that I can get the slope in here. And in this case, I'm just going to tap on the line tool and then put my pencil down until I find this middle point, press down, and then move my mouse or my pencil up. And again, I want to type in a value of five feet and hit enter. So now all I have to do is just draw a line from here to here and a line from here to here. And so notice how we've got a line in the middle here that we don't really need anymore because we just use it as kind of a guide. So we're just going to tap the eraser tool and then just tap and drag over top of this. So then we're going to use the push-pull tool and we want to extrude this back so that it aligns with our back face. So just activate push-pull, push your pencil down, and then you can move your mouse over any of these points right here. And we're going to use the inference in order to finalize this. So we'll press down again in order to finalize it. All right, and so right now, if we were to just put shingles on top of this, this wouldn't look very good because the roof is usually built up a little bit on top of this front face. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go find the offset tool. And we're gonna take this face. So we're gonna offset that face out by maybe six inches like this. And so notice how that gives you a little bit of overlap down here on the bottom. We can just use the eraser tool in order to erase that out. So I'm just gonna click and drag and I'm actually gonna erase both of these. And so now what we can do is we can use the push pull tool in order to extrude this forward. And so we'll say that this hangs out maybe like six inches. Then we can also use the push pull tool to extrude this back right here. And so usually I align it with the back edge and then I'll push pull it again, maybe like six more inches in order to give it that little bit of overhang in here. You can go ahead and erase out this back line over here. And so now let's go ahead and let's add a door. And so one thing about adding the door is you could come in here and just kind of like mouse over this line and just draw a door wherever. That's not very precise though. So what I'm going to do instead, so I'm going to use the tape measure tool in order to create a guide in here. So what I want to do is I want to activate that tool and then mouse over this right here. Well, notice how now I can move this over to a set value. So in this case, I'm assuming that my door is going to be maybe two feet off of this wall. So I can just type in a value of two feet right here. Now I have a guide that I can use as the base point for my door. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna activate the rectangle tool. We're gonna mouse over this face and we're gonna press down and we're gonna draw our door. And so in this case, we want our door to be three foot comma seven foot. And then we wanna hit enter. And so what that's done is that's given us our door opening. And so then we can tap on our tape measure tool and use the option to delete guides to get rid of that guide. Now we don't wanna leave our door like this cause it's kind of flat. So what we wanna do instead is we wanna use the offset tool in order to offset this out so that we can add a little bit of a frame. So, and so in this case, I'm gonna put my pencil over this door, press it down and then move it outward and then type in a value of two inches and hit enter. And we can go ahead and we can pinch to zoom in here and we can erase out this extra down below just by clicking or tapping and dragging over it. But what I want to do is I want to push pull this out a little bit just so I've got a little bit of thickness. So I'm just going to use the push pull tool and I'm just going to extrude this out. Maybe we'll call it an inch and even an inch might be a little too much, but that's okay. And so we could, if we wanted to come in here and model out like a knob or something like that, um, I'm not going to worry too much about that for right now. What I want to do now is I want to add a window on the side of our house. And so again, what we might do is we might use the guide function of the tape measure tool in order to do this. So I'm going to activate the tape measure tool. And what I want to do is I want to move my pencil over this line right here. And I want to press down. And what I want to do is I want to draw a guide and I'm going to lock it 
to the Z axis, I want to draw a guide that aligns with the top of this door because I want my window frame to align with my door frame. And then I could also create another guide coming off of this wall to set where my door or where my window is going to go. So in this case, I'm going to type in a value of three foot. We'll call this good. And so let's go ahead and let's add a window on our wall. And we're going to create a really simple window. So I'm just going to tap in here and I'm going to use the rectangle tool. I'm just going to move my pencil over this point and press down to start drawing. And then I'm just going to draw my window to whatever the dimensions are that I want. So in this case, we might do like a six foot comma four foot or something like that. And all we want to do is just offset this window again. So we're just going to press down and offset. We'll set our offset to maybe two inches again, kind of like our door frame. And we'll go ahead and we'll push pull this out a little bit. Maybe another two inches. And so we could definitely get more in depth with these windows, but for now, we're gonna go ahead and call this good. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna erase my guides using the tape measure tool right here. And so let's go ahead and let's add some materials to our building. So what we can do is we can tap on the paint bucket tool right here, and that's going to pop up a little window over here that has your materials in here. And note that with the iPad version, in order to keep this small, they haven't shipped it with a ton of window or materials built in. And so what we want to do is we want to click on the little button right here. And what that's going to do is that's going to allow us to download different materials that we want from the 3D warehouse. So in this particular situation, we need the roofing textures and we need the brick cladding textures. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on the download button right here in order to download and import those roof textures. So now those are going to show up in my list. And so in this case, we're going to pick one of the shingle roofs. So maybe this one right here. And notice how what we can do is we can tap on things in SketchUp in order to place that in your model. So now we've got a roofing material on top of this. But we also need to add our brick and cladding materials. So to do that, we're just going to scroll down until we find those. We'll click on download right here in order to find those materials. So now we've also got bricks in here like this, or we could also use this siding. And we're probably going to do a combination of the two, honestly, but let's go ahead and let's start by just adding maybe a stucco. And so notice how with that selected, I can fly around here and I can add that material just by tapping. And so you could also download like a glass material using the glass and mirrors right here. So if you wanted glass to put on your window right here, you can pull that down as well. So maybe something like this translucent glass with a sky texture on it like this. Eh, I don't like that. Let's go with this translucent gray material. And notice how you can actually see through this into your model um, because it's a transparent or translucent material. And so one thing I don't like about this, and this is kind of a trick that you can use in order to split up your faces, is at the moment, and I'm going to tap this to minimize my um, my materials. At the moment, this is very um, this is very basic, right? So it's just like this whole stucco wall, and it doesn't really look very good. And so what we might want to do is we might want to split this up a little bit. So if we were to go over on this side, for example, we might want to come in here with our pencil and split this up and add a different material. So for example, I might want to add like a masonry stone or something like that on the lower portion of this. The problem with this is it's a little bit time consuming, right? We would have to come in here and we would have to draw and split across most of these faces. Well, what we can do instead is, and I'm going to undo this, we can actually use this bottom face and the edges around it in order to really quickly split up this entire thing. So the way that we can do that is we just want to select his face and I'm actually going to double tap on it right here. And then I'm going to use the deselect in order to remove the selection of the face. So now all I have is the edges around the outside selected. Well, what we can do is we can use the move tool in copy mode. We can copy all of these edges up and split this face. So what we want to do is we want to tap on the option with the plus here for copy. What that's going to do is that's going to allow us to set a base point, tapping, and then move our mouse up or our pencil up like this until we get a location in here that works for us. Well, now notice how if I use the select tool, this has all been split up into different faces. 
And I probably should have deselected the edges over here, but that's okay. We can just erase this out real quick. But now we've got our face separate down below. Well, now we can just go back into our materials right here. And we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna pick up, I'm actually gonna go with this uh, colored blue brick. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to move around. Actually, let's go with the antique red brick. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move around like this and I'm gonna apply this material all the way around the outside of our house like this. And so now we've got a simple house inside of SketchUp. And so this should be enough to get you started. I think in the next video, we'll talk about how to create floor plans with walls that have thickness instead of like the single thickness wall. But this is a great easy way to get started in learning how to use SketchUp for iPad. All right, so that's where I'm going to end this video. Leave a comment below. Let me know if you have any questions about anything we talked about. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this, and I'll catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.